The Kodiak 900 is hands down one of the most impressive airplanes I've ever flown. Mark Brown is here to provide a tour inside and out of this unbelievable airplane that has 900 horsepower, carries up to 10 people with a cargo pod, takes off and lands in under 1500 feet, and still goes over 200 knots on one engine. And at the end of this video, there's a link to our full flight, which was just absolutely incredible, and you won't want to miss it. But first, here's a look at the airplane itself. We just debuted this airplane about six months ago at Oshkosh Air Show, a big brother to the Kodiak 100. So the Kodiak 100 came out in 2007. It's kind of the, our ultimate bush airplane, right? The Kodiak 900 is more about speed. I'll walk through some of the high level details of what makes the Kodiak 900 unique and also what makes it different in some areas than the Kodiak 100. The fuselage is the same size, so same beam width, same headroom, but it's about four feet longer. How that translates to interior space is uh, it's about three feet longer. In general, the Kodiak 100 and 900 share the same wing, share the same wing strut. They share the same landing gear to a certain extent. And then the basically the aft portion of the rear door, the tail cone, the tail feathers, there's some you know minor variations, but probably 98% are the same. Where the Kodiak 900 differs from the 100 is firewall forward. The 900 is completely different. So this is a five-bladed Hartzell composite. Max RPM is 1900. Makes it really quite quiet for an airplane with this much power. It has a lot of pull, still has some really good prop clearance for unimproved airport operations. This is 35 knots faster than the Kodiak 100. The engine inside is a Dash 140A. It makes 900 horsepower continuous. How that compares to the 100, the 100 is 750 on takeoff and, and climb out, and then 700 for cruise. So quite a bit more power translates to higher cruise speeds, better climb rates. Maintenance wise, the 100 was designed to be operated in places like Papua New Guinea or Indonesia. You don't have an MRO to run down to at the other end of the airport to fix a broken airplane. And so the 100 was designed to be very simple, very robust, so it didn't break, but simple in the sense that if it did break, it was easy and you know relatively cheap to fix. Mm. The 900 actually just, we added plus one to that in the sense that we had over a decade of knowing what you know 100 was like in the field and we had hundreds of thousands of hours of flight time to be able to use to then bring that into the development of the 900 to make it even easier to maintain even more simple um, so you'll see a lot of just kind of upgrades and updates throughout the airplane so the 900 was designed with the cargo pod as part of the plane. It's not an afterthought, it's not a bolt-on. Every 900 comes with a cargo pod, can't get it without it. What that allowed us to do was really clean everything up from an aerodynamic perspective. A lot of airplanes, you bolt on a cargo pod, you immediately lose 10 knots because it's an afterthought. It's not aerodynamically fared into the airplane. It's not really thought about from an, an aeronautical perspective. And so the 100, we did think about that. And so with the 100, you only lose two to three knots with the cargo pod. But in the 900, we said, hey, we want a 200 knot plus airplane that also has a cargo pod, which has not been done in an unpressurized single engine airplane. Our engineer is basically this whole front fairing. You can see it's really big and then it fares really nicely into the cargo pod. And then the cargo pod itself is very aerodynamic all the openings are flush. It just looks really clean. If I open this one, you can see it has quite a bit more space. Oh yeah. And then what's unique about our cargo pod, so with the Kodiak 900, which is a little bit hard to see, but it's underneath the rear slope of the cargo pod and it's just basically like a rear hatch. And so it folds down and then you can fit those really long items. That's how you get it in there. Right in through that. Okay. And then of course you you don't lose utility because you can put weight on that door. Every 900 comes standard with single point refueling, which is right up here. And it, it actually gives me an excuse to show the wheel pants. These are secondary structure, which all that basically means is these aren't some flimsy wheel pants you're gonna find on an old 172 from the 1970s. These are actually like fully part of the airplane to where you can stand on them I mean, they're not gonna go anywhere. I'm only 5'8", 5'9", on a good day, so I need them to get up here to um, use my single point refueling. Okay. And so that's the single point on every Kodiak 900, and that's, you know, standard equipment. Mm -hmm. 
So the door size is the same. The airplane sits a little bit taller and the gear changed a little bit. So it sits a little bit more parallel to the ground. Basically that just lifted the tail up. So we add a whole new mechanism. We added this, this arm hold here to help get, get you in and out. We also added, if you've ever seen a TBM, you'll recognize these steps. Just little refinements I like to show. And this is, again, I could go into a hundred different detail items if we had the time, but this is an easy one to show. So when they design these, they designed them to be soft clothes. So they're not, you know, you can, you can open them up and down. They're not gonna slam on your fingers, things like that. Just little refinements that we really thought about from a pilot and passenger perspective. And these are throughout the whole airplane. And then you didn't lose the functionality. You can remove this cord and that cord, and then the door folds flat. So for our operators that might be using this for air medical or just doing cool stuff with it, and you wanna bring a forklift or a pickup truck or an ambulance right up to the airplane, you can still do that with this door folding flat. Cool. Last thing I wanna talk about is the wing, why it's so amazing. This is an 8,000 pound airplane. And the way this wing is designed is in essence, it's two airfoils married to one. So the outboard wing and the inboard wing are slightly different. And why that matters is when the aircraft stalls on a straight wing airplane, the inboard wing stalls first. And a lot of airplanes will have stall fences and various things to prevent the stall from working its way out toward the wing tip. But in the Kodiak 900, you don't ever have enough elevator authority with a clean wing to ever get an outboard wing stall. And what that means is the wing is always creating some lift. That also translates to the, where the aileron is. And so you always have some aileron effectivity. So in essence, the aircraft is nearly impossible to stall and nearly impossible to spin. So it just adds that extra level of safety. It also adds the ability to fly really slow. Our R&D went into kind of a brand new interior and a well thought out interior. One of the biggest differences is these brand new seats. This is our Summit Plus interior. A couple features that I really love. Number one, the seats can go fore or aft. And by that I mean we have a, a configuration now where all seats are forward facing more like a commuter style, but you could easily turn these exact seats around and do a double club configuration or one club and forward facing seats or just four seats and no seats back here. So it's a really configurable type of seat, which this airplane needs because it's used for so many different missions and, and customers. And so the seats themselves are extraordinarily comfortable. They have dual armrests, they have headrests, they recline, they've got storage. And my favorite part is there's no tools needed to take them in or out. It's just two quick quarter turns on the seat tracks themselves. You can pull those up, you can move the seat to have a differing knee room, or you can take the seat out altogether. But it's less than five minutes to get all these seats out or back in the airplane. It, it's really convenient. A few other things, obviously we have a little bit more length, so we have more room. Easiest way to tell the difference between a Kodiak 100 and 900 is the 900 has a whole extra set of windows. And a few other things that we added that was that are new for the Kodiak 900 is these amenity panels on the sidewall. Every single seat comes with Limo plug for headsets, which basically means plain powered headsets. You're not relying on batteries. Every seat has a USB-A and a USB-C charging port, and every seat has a cup holder and a little phone storage. Basically the cockpit between the 100 and the 900 are very similar and that makes it really easy to jump from a 100 to a 900 for fleet operators that might have both. But there are a few key differences. So a few of the differences are the electrical system in terms of wire harness, battery, etc. This has an electric auto load shedding function and in essence, what that does is if you had an electrical failure of some kind, me, the pilot, wouldn't have to worry about what's essential, what's non-essential, and load shedding to save power, to save battery until I got on the ground. Basically, the electric bus system would do that for me. The battery was also moved. We had two batteries in the Kodiak 100 in the engine compartment, and we condensed that into one battery, which sits here between the co-pilot and pilot seat. Uh, one of the cool features about this battery is there's a quick disconnect feature. Why that's important is if you are operating in an Arctic type environment or a really cold environment or you needed to remove the battery for some situation, this battery you just basically open the 
uh, center console where it is, the battery unclips, comes out of the airplane and you can actually carry it inside and leave it in a heated, you know, heated home or hangar or whatever overnight. And that way it doesn't degrade in the Arctic type environment. In general though, both Kodiak 100 and 900 have the G1000 NXI. It has kind of the latest and greatest NXI version. So this has 3D audio, it has ambient noise, it has wire aware, which is actually a feature that was really more popular in helicopters, but we figured the Kodiak product line is often flying in low environments, whether it's doing firefighting observation or special missions or backcountry. So we actually incorporated WireAware into the Kodiak, which will tell you on the G1000 where power lines are. The environmental system was also upgraded quite substantially in the Kodiak 900. The Dash 140A engine gives us a lot of bleed air heat. And what that allowed us to do was pipe bleed air heat through the entire airplane now. In a situation where maybe the pilots are really hot and the passengers are really cold because they're shaded by the high wing, you can actually have AC blowing on the pilots and heat on the passenger's feet. It's pretty easy, relatively speaking, to regulate a pressurized vessel because it's not getting the outside air in and inside air out as easily, where this unpressurized airplane is not as well sealed. And so having a good environmental control system is a really nice feature, and this one works really well. This airplane is incredible on the ground, but you're not gonna believe how it flies. The performance just absolutely blew me away. And in the video on the screen, Mark lets me demo fly this airplane to demonstrate all that it can do. You won't wanna miss it, so I'll see you in that video.